Sky Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champion, eight-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro for the Raiders. You can catch him on Fox NFL Sunday every weekend. Howie Long, we're almost there, baby. Niners, Chiefs, let's go. I, you know, I'm still, I'm still a buzz over that NFC Championship game. Uh, <laughs> still. You know, I mean, one, the crowd was. We've done 30 championship games, and I can't, I can't remember there being more people on the field. You know, stars, musicians. I somebody had to tell me, and Gronk didn't even know who you know Journey was. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, I heard that. I said, Ron, come on. He's like, don't stop believing. Yeah, I think I know that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like the number one or two most downloaded song ever in the history of music. Yeah, Gronk. I see. I think I know that. And now Journey headlining Gronk Beach at the Super Bowl. Bowl, bowl, bowl. Uh, okay, we, we're gonna get we're gonna get into all things Super Bowl. We love the Lions. So hopefully, with Dan Campbell, like they'll get there again, and a lot of lessons to be learned well, in that I think game. They will. Uh, you don't? You think they will? I do. Okay. I. I, I they're young. They're extremely talented. Um, I think the uh, the trajectory on that football team is, you know, people aren't, aren't going to want to see that football team down the road here. And, and the best news they could possibly get is their coordinator uh, staying in the building. Yeah. Now, did Bob Weir come talk to you guys? Or, like, did he try to say hi to Gronk? And Gronk was like, I don't know who you are. Like, how did this go? Oh, I Gronk definitely didn't know who Bob Weir was. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can positively you know confirm that uh, Bob Weir was a really really nice guy. He's a he's a big football fan. Uh, he uh, was talking about old teams that I was on, and you know we had a good conversation. And you know it's funny with all the things that you know have happened over the last forty three forty four years in the NFL. I sent Chris a picture of me with Bob Ware. And I'm sure. You, you would think I hung the moon. You know, I mean, yeah. it was like it, it eclipsed everything. I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure it did. I mean, it, 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 take that, Taylor Swift. Uh, okay, we're going to get into the matchup, of course, to get, get into your brilliant mind. But we did just get breaking news here on the program. Schefter of ESPN uh, reporting that Dan Quinn, DQ, hired as the head coach of the Commanders. He, of course, goes from Dallas as the D coordinator there. Not the best, like, taste in your mouth after that last game. Speaking of the NFC, but how do you make, what do you make of this fit with Washington? I think his record as the head coach of the Falcons over six years was 43 and 42. I do like it. He's got, I mean, for him, he's got the number two overall pick and millions and millions to spend. Well, I'll go back to one, his time in Seattle. Uh, I, I love the foundation of, you know, his coaching, uh, where he came from and what they were all about. And uh, two, when he, you know, being a head coach down in Atlanta, you, you mentioned his career record as a head coach. If, and, and this is the one thing, and we were covering the game and Chris played in the game and uh, it, it was New England uh, versus Atlanta and, and, and the offensive coordinator was, you know, Kyle Shanahan. And it was the end of the game. And if Dan Quinn, as the head coach says, let's run the ball four times here and let's get out of here with, with, with the Super Bowl trophy. <clears throat> we're having a totally different conversation, but I digress. Um, I, you know, it was one of the, you know, um, more puzzling ends to a game uh, that I've seen. And mm. uh, I think Dan is a great coordinator. He's been a great coordinator. I love Dan. I love, I love his energy. I, I love his system. Uh, I think they had some holes in the system at the end in Dallas. <clears throat> and I think maybe Dallas ran its course. You, you're starting to hear kind of, you know, there's people have podcasts and, you know, Jerry had a press conference and, you know, players are voicing their displeasure and, you know, family members are have, have accounts online. And, you know, it, it's it's all the things that if I were running a football team, you know, in my frame of reference was was our football team. And the Raider philosophy under Al Davis was, you know, you build a wall around the building and it's us against them and mm -hmm. you don't let anyone in. And, and I think the more distractions you have, uh, the, the less your chances of being successful, particularly towards the end. And, and I think Dallas needs to lock in and focus and do some things. And I think this is a great opportunity for Dan Quinn. 
it's a new owner. Um, I had dinner with someone from the organization last night, and hmm. they're they're going to be a really well run organization in contrast to what they've been over the last eight, nine, ten years uh, yeah. under Glenn Snyder. I love DQ. I love the vibe of this new team. They deserve the best. He's going to inject a lot of energy yep. into this team. If you look at, if you think about it, in three years with the Cowboys, he had a top five defense that he ran, the commanders last year, they were bottom. They were actually dead last in scoring defense, total defense, and passing. He'll improve there. As a head coach, I, I, I need to see something. I need to see something. I want to see something. They've got, I think, $70 million in cap space they can spend, so it's a very nice spot. It does make me think like Dan Quinn over Bill Belichick. Dan Quinn over Bill Belichick. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Well, I, you know, I think this is kind of a, the trend now is, uh, how old is the guy in Seattle? I think he's, uh, we thought Sean McVay was 36. young. I mean, yeah, he's the youngest coach in football. Um, and I think that's probably a really great hire. He apparently is a really bright guy. Yeah. I think Washington is a great opportunity. I think with each experience you have as a coach, how much experience can a 36 or 35-year-old guy have? And, and I, I love what they did in Baltimore defensively. Uh, and, and I think you take from that organization how that organization is run, the kind of identity, the culture they have, and mm -hmm. you take some of that to Seattle. And, and they obviously wanted a, a fresh start. And I thought Dan Quinn might have been a great option up in Seattle, but I think the Washington thing and, and his experience since being the coach in Atlanta, uh, I, I think he's going to kind of pull from that and – you, you learn, you learn, and you you kind of hope you don't make the same mistakes uh, again. And when you have a 205 pound linebacker uh, on first down, you know teams are going to find you in the run game, and yeah. and that happened that happened a couple three times, and uh, that was a mistake. And and part of that's personnel. Yeah, it's, they got to fix the offensive game. line. They got little Sam Howell. Like, I was cheering him on the whole time, but the dude was getting beat up the entire season. So we wish Dan Quinn lots of success yep. uh, as we swing over to the Super Bowl matchup here. Let's get to this big game. Now, Chiefs yeah. Niners, you're the perfect person to talk to because you covered the first bout of this uh, exchange of heavyweights back in 2020. It was with Fox. It was Super Bowl 54. It was Miami. What's the biggest or most important difference? It was the start of COVID. Yes, wild. Yeah. Gosh, um, what is the biggest difference or change or thing that we should be thinking about in the rematch from then till now, which really does feel like ten years ago in different squads? Well, you know, San Francisco is thankful that Tyreek Hill is not in the game. Uh, that's one. Two, they. I think the defense that you think back to that game, San Francisco's defense was a better defense than the defense that San Francisco has right now. Um, I, you know, I thought Nick Bosa played about as well as you could play last week <clears throat> and, you know, love the way he plays, love the way Warner plays, uh, you know, Ward is another great player for them. That team is defined more by their offense now. Uh, and, and I think the defense is, is not the defense that they had when they played Kansas city in the Super Bowl. uh, I think the offense is better. Conversely, what Kansas City did was they went young last year mm -hmm. on defense. And you saw the growing pains in the beginning of the season, and then they kind of peaked. And and I think they've really evolved into, and Steve Spagnuolo is one of the great big game defensive coordinators uh, we've had in football, and, and you can't say enough about him. That being said, I, I think, you know, the problems that plague them offensively all year long, the penalties, the drop balls, you know, Travis, you know, listen, uh, you know, I'm 64, you know, the, the miles kind of add up and, you know, he's got some, he's got some miles on that, uh, on the wheels there. And, and I think the big move for him was, and I think it was a really smart move mm. that he sat week 18 and gave him an opportunity to kind of recharge. And the Travis that we're used to seeing is the Travis we saw there in the playoff, is. saw last week. <clears throat> what they did in Baltimore uh, speaks volumes. They, you know, I think they had three penalties. I, I think they had zero drop balls. Uh, you know, guys that 
guys that make catches. Um, McCall, McCall Hardman uh, yeah. makes a big catch that, you know, you, you go back to the drop maybe. Works. There were so many things that came to get from from a Super Bowl. And, and, it, and it, it, I, I think it really speaks volumes about, and Gronk has probably talked about this, when you go to that many Super Bowls and you're in the playoffs every year, you know, the calendar gets longer, the wear and tear on the body, the mind, um, the ability to kind of get back at it and be as inspired. And I think it took them a while to kind of get to where they needed to get to in Kansas City, but they seem to be there right now. And Patrick Mahomes remind us, reminded us once again why he's the closest thing to Michael Jordan we have in, in football. And wow. He's, and he's not he, doing it by putting it all on his shoulders. He's sort of managing the game and letting something that you love, the defense, be the star, which it really is. I mean, and this Chiefs defense is dangerous. I think it's why they're here. They let the offense find their rhythm, click. They let they allowed for Travis to be able to sit, to get healthy, to get back to, to good. Why is this Chiefs defense First of all, why is Spags in his bag like this? He's out of control right now. But what makes this Chiefs defense so dangerous for Brock Purdy and company? Well, you know, it's it's kind of like the team that, in in a sense, somewhat like we had back in, you know, when the film was black and white, but it was Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes. And we go into Washington and Washington had set a record uh, for offensive points that stood till the Chris Carter, Randy Moss Vikings. Uh, so it stood for quite a period of time. If you've got those two guys, you could do so many things creatively. When you've got a, you know, a, a Chris Jones at defensive tackle, Carl Loftus, he, he's a guy who really has come on. And, and I think they've done an amazing job in the draft. Like I said, they went young last year. They, they went through the growing pains throughout the course of last year and peaked at the end of the year. And suddenly their defense was you know, if not the best defensive football, it's right there at the top. And when you can lock people down and you can get creative on the back end <clears throat> in today's game, and, you know, they'll give Brock a lot of looks and free snap and they can do some things. And, and you know that it's, it's interesting because C. Spagnuolo is a guy that, you know, he has a plan, he has a counter, and then he has kind of an end of game kind of wrinkle that he brings and, you know, I, I'm sure I'm hopeful that this game is is not as low scoring as maybe the, the Baltimore Kansas City game was last week, but certainly something that's close enough to where end of game, you've got to make great decisions, both offensively and defensively. And I think Steve Spagnuolo is a guy that has great adjustments at the end of games. So do they remind you of your defense when you won the Super Bowl? Well, from the standpoint that when you've got two corners like they have, mm -hmm. you know, they uh, Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes didn't even have to get in the puddle. We knew what they were doing. They were in cover one, or or it was cover three, right. and and that's it. You know, they, they're they're man. They're not going in motion. They're not uh, switching sides. And you know, uh, Washington at that point had you know a great receiving core, and they were dynamic offensively. And our defensive line matched up well. And I. And I think this is a really fascinating matchup. It's not, it's not the same matchup we had with the Kansas City San Francisco Super Bowl that we covered down in Miami, yeah. but uh, I certainly I think it it has the it has the ability I think to be a really really amazing. Kyle Shanahan's never beat Andy Reid. Yeah, I, what do you make of that? I I'm and just picturing. You know, I'm picturing. Th I want. I want like Theismann's thoughts on like everything that you just said. But but what? Yeah, what you're saying about the coaches is 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 sort of wild. And if you look at the Niners, Howie, they've struggled against the other top defenses that they've faced: the Browns, the Ravens. What was like? You know, what is it about these defenses that are given this Niners squad problems and also slow starts from the NFC North teams? Well, I, here are the two things. There, let's take each game individually. One is Cleveland. It, it, was, a, it was a rainy day. Mm -hmm. you know, some quarterbacks do not like wet ball. Okay. And, and Troy Aikman will tell you, you know, honestly, that if it was raining, if there was rain in the forecast, he didn't sleep all night because Troy struggled to throw a wet ball. Um, <laughs> Brock, obviously, and, and the, here's the big thing with Brock. 
Brock struggled in that game versus Cleveland, but, you know, that final drive, which, you know, should have probably been a game-winning drive, uh, the kicker missed the field goal. And in and, and tough conditions, uh, and, and understandably, uh, but Brock has always been big at the end of games in his short career. And, you know, the games that he has struggled, the Baltimore game, listen, Trent Williams goes down, two other offensive linemen go down, three tip balls. He's got a, you know, he's got a stinger in his neck that's going down his arm. And, you know, you got to pull him out of the game. The game is out of reach almost immediately. And it's almost like you have to press the reset button. I will say they probably were breathing a sigh of relief when they saw the Baltimore score. I mean, that being said, I mean, Kansas City is certainly no uh, no easy task. But uh, San Francisco's healthy, mm-hmm. gotten contributions. Jennings made big plays. Ayuk is one of the most underrated receivers in football. Amen. McCaffrey last week, the 90 tough, tough yards. I, I love their offense and, and what they're about. And, and Brock, uh, you know, it seems like he's like the Cowboys or Notre Dame or whoever. You either hate him or you love him. Yeah. And it, it seems like it's 50-50 down the middle. It's like blue cheese or cilantro or, or you know, it's right. a, he's the most polarizing for, for, for what reason I don't quite understand other than, you know, that he's in a great system, has great weapons. Like we're taking that away. Yeah, but a lot, you know, a lot of teams, a lot of quarterbacks are in systems and have great weapons. Yes. I'm not sure what the visceral response is to him. I, I, I don't understand it. It's, it's, uh, uh, but it's, it's he's strange. Shown the, he, to, to really, the point is he's shown the ability at the end of games, yeah. which is really, you know, what defines quarterbacks at the end of games to make big plays. And, and you know, I'm happy for him. He seems like it's such a great story. Uh, who's winning this game, Howie? Uh, between now and then, <laughs> I think we've all who, who've been in the media long enough, and, you know, and I've seen odd things happen. Uh, between now and then, I want to make sure everyone's in the lineup who's healthy, who's okay, who's not. Uh Drama can unfold, you know, in the in the days and week and a half here leading up to the game. That's not an answer. What's no, I, I'm, what? I'm nowhere Who's, near. I don't even I'm understand. Near, well, near in your process, we, we just discussed every angle of this game where you are in your process right now. Granted, you can change this, tell me, you can okay, change tell this me 19 who's, times. Tell me who's not going to play. Tell me who's going to get hurt. Tell me who's going to get in trouble between now and then. Oh, are you worried about these players not handling Vegas well? I always well? worry. Okay. I'm the fun police. (laughs) That comes from being a dad, comes from being a former Raider, uh, comes from all of that. Well, you're, I mean, your Raider organization is, I think, welcoming everybody to town next week, and it's going to be so, so fun. I'm going to let you weasel out without an answer, Howie, just because you're family, and that's just just how we do things around here. Thank you. I'll be next Thursday. Yes. Uh, By the way, your outfits for the playoffs. Mwah. Just, oh, thank you. You brought it. You brought it. Uh, Howie, we appreciate you.